Here is the planet's ultimate game. The final of the 21st Football World Cup. Flicked in by Griezmann and flicked on! And France take the lead in the World Cup final! Welcome to our Arab News World Cup podcast and I'm delighted to say the World Cup is tomorrow. Fantastic stuff. All the months of waiting are over. It is finally upon us. The teams have arrived. Fans are arriving. So excited. Welcome, Ali. Are you feeling it? I am definitely feeling it. I'm, uh, we're very excited. Uh, I've been talking to a few of our uh, colleagues and a few of our correspondents who are already on the ground. Uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement. You know, obviously everyone's following the news on uh, and you know all all the social media posts. You Amazing. know, there's been you know yeah. I mean you know like I think it, it, you know there's been controversies along the way. There's been like doubts and all that, but it's here. The stadiums are fantastic. The mm. fans are excited. You know, like uh, I know a lot of people are um, are based in in Saudi and based in uh, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. They're going to be flying over in the, in the next few days to catch their team. So yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, and lots very, of footballers calling me. I'm arriving in Dubai. I'm coming here. I'm doing that. Newcastle are going to Saudi. Sunderland are coming. Arsenal. Are coming. It's just a football heaven for the Middle East. And right. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, you know, there, you know, there's, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, um, there's going to be the Dubai Super Cup 2022, you know, which is Brilliant. is going to have Liverpool, Arsenal, uh, Milan, and Lyon. And people are like saying, "Well, why during the World Cup the matches will actually fall on the days when there are no World Cup matches?" Is planned that way, you know. These teams come here for uh, warm weather training, and so they decided to have this tournament. So yeah, there's uh, like plenty of football, uh, and um, obviously the World Cup. But uh, as you say, Newcastle are going to Saudi as well. So there's like excitement uh, there as well for their uh, all their new army of fans. Interestingly as well, I know from a few players that are just coming over themselves to do personal warm winter training. So there's players that aren't, that are with clubs that some clubs maybe are using the, the break to have a to have a break. But some of the players are coming themselves and they're getting together as a group and they're going to be training in various outlets around the Middle East. Fantastic. Listen, what I've done for today, Ali, because we are literally 24 hours away from the greatest show on the planet, by the way, is we've picked five points to go through. And I think they're talking points, discussion points. I'm going to ask you and you can throw the answers and together we can hopefully give our listeners some sort of insight into the into the World Cup and what we feel from uh, an Arab news perspective. So we'll kick it off with the all-important one for us, of course. Uh, on the 22nd, it's a huge, huge game for more than one reason. But it's Saudi against Argentina. So the first question I've got for you is, it's, it's the only question really, are Saudi ready uh, for possibly the GOAT himself, uh, Leo Messi? Yeah, I mean, you know, this this match we we've been penciled it in as soon as the the draw was made, you know, for obviously for fans in this part of the world, and uh, um, you know the fact that you know it's Messi's last World Cup, you know, just you know is perfect, like uh, you know for, for the fans who absolutely adore him in this part of the world, you know, and obviously playing against Saudi. Um, look, Saudi's preparations have been solid rather than spectacular you know they haven't con- they barely concede but they haven't been scoring either you know like plenty of draws uh you know they uh, they actually lost their last uh, preparation game but it was against croatia you know a strong croatia team all the other games they they were quite um, you know they were unbeaten in the the previous five um but like i said mostly draws they only won one match uh, they're not scoring much you know i mean and like you know uh, renard will be slightly worried about that but talking about argentina and how good they are uh, you know, at least the one good thing that's come out of all these preparations is Saudi look very solid at the back. They they haven't been conceding. However, obviously, you know what they're going to get now is a completely different level of uh, you know of uh, opposition. You know, they they would not have faced any anything close to this uh, in their preparations. So, you know, Argentina they've got. You know, obviously, uh, alongside Messi, you know, they've got uh, Lautaro Martinez, uh, Julian Alvarez of uh, Manchester City. He's been playing well they, as well. They play very so, well currently domestic. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, above all, uh, Angel Di Maria, you know, was brilliant uh, when they beat the UAE 5-0 a few days ago. You know, we were in, we were in Abu Dhabi we were for there, that. Right? 
Yeah, we were there, mate. Uh, like a, an, an incredible atmosphere, actually. You know, it was almost like a, a send off for Messi. You know, like uh, you know, it, it, clearly everyone was there for Messi. You know, uh, when the UAE play, usually the stands are a sea of white. You know, and and this time it was just like a sort of color and noise everywhere. Lots of Argentina flags, a lot of UAE fans as well. But even they were were like uh, shouting for him every time he touched the ball. The, you know, it was, there there was like either, a either, wasn't it, to 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 one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player on the planet. Absolutely, absolutely. There was a lot of feeling like that. And we're starting to see like a swell of emotion going behind Argentina. A lot of people want them to win the World Cup for Messi, you know, so it's great. I think for Saudi, you know, whatever happens, it's a tough one. It's a tough, tough start. You know, it's the worst possible start you really uh, in terms of like difficulty. But, you know, they should embrace this. You know, this is a great great match you know like and, and as you say arguably the best player ever uh they should absolutely embrace this match and the whole world will be watching and playing against Messi is got to be an honor as well listen in less than 48 hours the three lions will play against Iran it's not that game that's cropped up for me in the five point um it is a great game and hopefully England fans will be hoping that they, they do the business a lot of pressure on Gareth Southgate by the way but it's the November the 29th fixture that stands out as our main talking point Ali because it's a, a real humdinger of a of a game. It's England against Wales on the 29th. Now, this could be the group decider, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, England are like by far sort of the favourites for that group. But I, I do think this, this group could have some shocks in it, you know. And um, I honestly think Iran, you know, like, could spring a, a shock, maybe possibly against the US as well. You know, there's history to that fixture. You know, they beat them in uh, in 1998. Could possibly do it again. You know, it's a strong Iran team. Uh, so this group might have, you know, I, I look at it and could see a few shocks there. And one of them could be actually Wales against England. You know, I mean, we like the, you know, it could be the, the group decider. I mean, in terms of who finishes uh, first or second, but Whisper you know, it could... quietly in the valleys. But would it be a shock to Wales fans? I, no, I mean, you know, like I think, I think a lot of them think, you know, Wales. I've, I've spoken to quite a few well, well, Welsh fans, and they they say, like, you know, you know, the, the this the spirit of the team, you know, they will absolutely. I'm sure they're going to be giving their all in all the matches, but they against England, you know, they'll, you know, that will be like a big scalp, as they say, you know, and uh, and I think that could be a decider. I mean. Yeah. Again, chances are England probably you know will, will qualify as one of the two. For Wales, it could be one that they need to win or they need to get something out of. I uh, know, but like we, I look at that and along the other matches, I think they, they, this group could have some shocks, you know, and that could be one of them. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously there's the Premier League angle, Pete, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. there's so many connotations from that with the Premier League as well. I mean, obviously it's a big fixture to look at in the World Cup, but the Premier League connotations give it that global phenomenon again because it's the Premier League within the World Cup. You know, you throw into the mix the, the, the Gareth Bale element, who is the, the darling of, of Wales. But also I think that something I wanted to pick up on is that England are perennially slow starters. And that, that mm. just going back to that, you know, I think this could be a, a winner takes all because I, I have a feeling, and it's happened in past World Cups with England as well, Ali, that an unfancied nation such as Egypt, you know, for Egypt swap Iran, if there's a draw in there, then England could be going in this need in the result, and Wales will thrive on that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and you know what? I mean, you, you, you were talking about the Premier League angle, you know, matches like that occasionally, you know, end up, being a little bit like a, a Premier League match, you know, and and not not in the best possible way sometimes, you know. I mean, physical. Um, very physical. I mean, there's you know like a, there's a, a notorious game if you want when England played uh, uh, Ireland right at the start of the 1990 World Cup, you know, like a terrible game, you know. Uh, you know, it, was, it finished one-one. Uh, Lineker and uh, Sheedy, I think, scored, and it was uh, you know, and it, it was like like watching. A first division match, if you want, yeah. at the time, you know, like really, uh, and uh, and I remember like the disappointment, but pe- people like were in the quality, how disappointed people were in the quality of football, you know. I'm, I, again, you know, I, I think probably the teams are a little bit more refined these days, you know, but uh, but it could turn into like a, a battle, you know, a, a little bit like a, a Premier League game where quality is not at a premium, shall we say? It would be 
equivalent to it wouldn't be Stoke on a Tuesday night, but it could be Doha on a Monday night. Let's hope. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I think that England's form and and their two one win at the Euros will they'll carry that in in into this. But it was it was it was funny to note that Wales went further. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we, I mean, we were always talking about Euro two thousand sixteen here. Yeah. You know, like uh, that. It was a, it was a good game. You know, like uh, Wales led obviously, and uh, and then England England came back and well, Vardy equalised uh, after Bale had given the lead, and and it was Daniel Sturridge in injury time. You know, and um, and but and, and obviously that was like. Uh, uh, a big, big win for for England. Very disappointing for Wales the, the way they lost it. But then Wales went further, as you just said. You know they went further, and that that incredible match against Belgium uh, in the quarter final when they won three one, and then the semi final against Portugal. Obviously they they lost, but but what a tournament it was for them. You know, so they I mean you know I think you know they will be inspired by that. You know by the memory of that. You know so even you know ho- hopefully. You know, for well, hopefully for for the Welsh fans, of course. But like, should they go through, re- regardless of what happens in that match? You know, they, they'll always remember that, even though they lost that match. You know, they ended up going further than England, and and well, further than most teams. You know, they got to the, uh, the semi final. So I think uh, I think like a lot to look forward to for that match. I've got to give a special mention to the Wales fans because they're coming over in their droves. By the way, using the Middle East as a as a base camp, and especially in Dubai. So, funnily enough, I bumped into John Robinson, former Wales legend, Neil Taylor, also former Wales legend, who are both in the UAE at present. So, I've got to w- give Wales, uh, wish them good luck. And also to John Dyke, who's organised a fantastic Welsh society. Many of the fans go into an opening party tomorrow um, in the UAE. So, good luck to all the Wales fans. They're going to enjoy it, whatever happens, Ali. Um, Absolutely. Again, it's what the occasion's all about. Now, Listen, we're, we're going to be looking at players that are going to stand out and make these fixtures special, aren't we? So like stars of the tournament, if you will. So I've got to start with one and I'm going to put it to you. Uh, it's Mbappe, isn't it? And say what you like. He's incredible. But has he exploded yet? You know, where star of the last tournament and we say, is he the next world's best player? But we're still talking about the two goats of Messi and Ronaldo. So is this his time? Absolutely. I mean, you made a great point, but he was the start of the last tournament. I mean, you know, like one thing we have to remember about Mbappe when when people talk about what has he achieved, you know, that he's actually won the World Cup and he was France's best player, you know, uh, or I mean, definitely like uh, one of one of the best players in the last tournament. So he's proven himself at this level, you know, that, you know like, you know, already a, a world champion at such a young age. But at the time, as you mentioned, we 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 all said, you know, this is the world's next best player, you know. That he will take over from Ronaldo and Messi and all that. And four years on, possibly because he stay, stayed at PSG, you know, where like people still judge, like they say, like, well, you know, it's not uh, it's not the most difficult place to be in, you know. While Messi and and Ronaldo were winning uh, Champions League titles, playing in in uh, you know one of the toughest leagues in the world in Spain, you know, and in Ronaldo's case, obviously in the Premier League, you know, uh, Mbappe has stayed in 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 France. So you know that extra step where we say he is definitively the best player in the world. People are still holding back on that, you know, and obviously. Again, you just said we're still talking about Ronaldo and Messi, even though I mean people say you know maybe Mbappe and Haaland are like the two leading players now, like or the two like most exciting players. You know, you know the last few, few years haven't been as successful for either Ronaldo or Messi. We are still talking about them. You know, like this is their uh, you know this this is their swan song. You know, you know I'm, I'm sure you know you know surely this is going to be the last World Cup for both of them. You know, and we're especially in Messi's case, we're talking about possibly winning it. Um, so yeah, so I think I think there will be a lot of pressure on Mbappe, you know, like uh, you know, as as there will be on France, you know, because they are one of the favorites. But yeah, I mean, this could be his moment, you know. And I mean, we we really thought you know 2018 was his moment, and it was. But you know, maybe he didn't push on in exactly the way we did. His his form is explosive, you know, in France, you know, and he scores plenty of goals and assists and all that. But you know, people are not convinced. Maybe they they want something more. So maybe this will be. The final passing of the torch. Should France win it, and should he have another great tournament? I mean, he would, you know, he, you know, he he would be like a two-time world champion, and you know, you can't ask for more than that, really. Got to mention Ronaldo just before we move on, and and the reason I want to mention it is because he has just created a big fuss domestically with his team, Manchester United, with this explosive interview that he's done. But he's also created a serious problem 
or his international teammates ahead of a huge World Cup for Portugal. Not many people have picked up on that yet, but I noticed with interest it was a rather cool reception from Bruno Fernandes and his teammates in the Portugal camp. I, I, he really hasn't thought this one through as far as World Cup goes. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that we, we, we saw that uh, on social media, the, that little clip, and they played it down saying it was just a joke and, you know, he was just, you know, because he was late and all that. Uh, but, you know, even if, you know, that video didn't exist, you know, surely Bruno Fernandes and, and um, you know, uh, Ronaldo will have like a bit of, uh, you know, awkwardness, shall we say, after yeah. after the comments, you know. Uh, as you say, you know, like he hasn't thought it through, you know, you know, with all due respect to Ronaldo, I think, uh, you know, he probably has thought it through and just doesn't care, you know. I mean, he's, he's always looking out for number one, as we know. Fair play, you know, that's what got him to this, uh, to where he is. But, I mean, even by his standards, and a lot of people say, you know, he's, you know, he's got a big ego and, you know, he's a winner and, uh, you know, um, you know, he's out for himself, you know, these things might not always be true, you know, like maybe some people are a bit unfair, he's just like a winner, uh, but that was uh, just, I mean, uh, I mean, he threw everybody under the bus, from his manager to his teammates. To so size you know. bus, wasn't it? Listen, yes. uh, the words, we'll leave that, we'll leave that with the yeah. words legacy and tarnished from my, from my perspective. Okay, listen, one of the games or one of the great games of any international fixture, never mind the World Cup, throws up great memories, you know, retro vibes as well. It's Spain against Germany, Ali, on November the 27th. Second match of the group, so it could be pivotal, uh, the tournament. Germany are a bit of an unknown quantity for once, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they obviously had a, a very bad Euros last year and a bad World Cup in 2000. 18, you know, obviously Spain have a very young team, uh, or like after that, you know, the great team of about 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, you know, like sort of they, they're rebuilding. Luis Enrique has done a great job. And, um, I, you know, just on paper, as you say, you know, it, it looks like the tie of the, of the group stages, you know, it, it really does stand out this match. And, uh, we don't know which Germany is going to show up, you know, they've, you know, They've been very inconsistent in recent times. They've lost Timo Werner, who didn't have a great time at uh, Chelsea, but had been having a good time back in Germany. But like they've lost him and all that. Uh, they've got a couple of really uh, young players. Musiala at, uh, um, at Bayern Munich um, is one that could be, you know, like mm -hmm. an emerging star for them. The 19-year-old is a brilliant player, you know. But I think, you know, like for me, um, I look at Spain and, you know, they they played really well at the Euros last year. I think they went a little bit under the radar, but they had some really, really good performances. And obviously lost to Italy, uh, got knocked out by Italy, who w went on to win it. But, you know, I, I look at Pedri from Barcelona and I see an absolute star there. You know, I mean, he it could, it, 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 yeah, he is absolutely. I mean, I've been going on about him in the other podcasts and, and this po uh, um, and in our World Cup podcast as well. Um, and he's just fantastic, you know, for someone in his age, 19 year old, you know, like already was a star at the uh, Euros last year. I think this he could emerge as one of the one of the stars of the tournament. The next category, basically, it has to be by itself. It's not a game. It's not a player. It's a nation. And it wouldn't be a World Cup without this nation. It's the Samba beat of Brazil. Love Brazil. When you think of World Cup and Ali, I've got to say, I've been looking at so many designs and posters come and watch the world cup here do this everyone's got that samba flavor the gold the green it just it conjures up the the spirit of the world cup so brazil this time best squad historically uh, any great brazil team obviously as i've just said lights up the world cup but this squad is special right it is it is i mean and i think there's so much excitement about it, it, it it's amazing pete you know uh even when they go through their bad periods, like sort of all of us have these childhood memories of Brazil. As you say, it just conjures up images, like World Cup conjures up images of, of Brazilian teams. Even when they, you know, they haven't been great, you know, they still, you know, obviously had success. They haven't won it in 20 years, you know. Amazing, uh, so, really, to think that. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was, there's been a couple of, obviously great generations uh, of uh, Brazilian players after that uh, uh, win. But, um, um, you know, like, again, it's Neymar's, big tournament i mean like, a lot of ex is expected of him you know you know he in 2014 he got injured when the tournament was in brazil last time he underperformed so this is massive for for neymar you know again he, could this be the, the tournament like which confirms him 
along the greats, you know, like people, again, you know, possibly have expected more out of Neymar, although he had like a, a fantastic, you know, fantastic time uh, uh, at Barcelona. But the, the move to PSG, again, in, in a little bit like what we spoke about Mbappe earlier, you know, the, maybe people are, you know, reluctant to give the credit, you know, even, even if you're having, uh, scoring lots of goals. His own fans system. are critical of him, Ali. His own fans yeah. are critical yeah. of him. So that, that tells yeah, me ab- everything. Absolutely. But going back to the, the squad, I mean, it's such a strong squad. You know, I mean, we, we look at it. France have a very strong squad, but um, I think we look at uh, Brazil and the, the, the quality in there is just great. Just like looking at, at the front, you know, Vinicius Jr., who's obviously scored the winning goal in the Champions League final against Liverpool. You know, you've got uh, uh, Neymar himself as well. Rafinha at Barcelona uh, haven't been hasn't been having a great time, but I mean, uh, I mentioned this before Kaka like predicted that he would be like one of the tournaments uh, uh one of the stars of the tournament uh, and obviously like just you know like incredible players across the, the midfield the back uh you know with the uh, Thiago Silva and you know in, in goal uh, Allison Ederson as backup you know um it's just the two best keepers them. in the world yeah and and uh you know I'll throw it back at you because there's one particular player who I think is going to be also you know, given the opportunity, will be one of the stars of the tournament, but it's someone that I'm going to let you talk about. Uh, Bruno Gimaraj, uh, for me, the finest player, finest midfielder I've seen in a domestic Newcastle shirt. And uh, it's raised to eyebrows on our sister podcast when I've mentioned it. We've had some great names on there. Even Darren Anderson was surprised on this very World Cup podcast when I said it, but I stick by it. And I think what he brings, Ali, along with other players, not just Bruno, by the way, is something that not many people and our media colleagues have picked up on this Brazil side. They've got steel in them. We know about the flair. We know about the samba. We know about the silky skills and the goals. They've got steel. They've got two choices, the best goalkeepers in the world. They've got a great defence. In the middle, Bruno in the middle, pardon the pun, but they have got a player who can dictate but loves a tackle as well. So I think Brazil have got an added entity to this year and that's why they're my favorites can't wait to see them absolutely i mean i think and again just going back to the initial point you made you know a great brazil always lights up the tournament you know and uh you know like you know fans of other countries might you know disagree and say well you know we're rivals of this like but, but i think for a lot of the neutrals or a lot of the uh, the fans of maybe teams that don't have uh you know, chance of winning it, you know, Brazil is almost, you know, like just a beacon really at the World Cup, you know, and um, it's become a bit of a cliche, you know, Brazil, Samba Boys, World Cup and all that. But when they are good, they really sort of take the le- uh, tournaments to a higher level. It's a fantastic cliche, by the way, because I love it. Yeah. The fans, everyone, everyone loves Brazil. You know, cue, cue the beachside um, scenes, uh, people in Brazil shirts, keeping the ball up on the beach. Can't wait, can't wait to see Brazil. Listen, another one that is a fantastic pointer, by the way, and we've got a huge, huge African audience that listen to our shows, so wanted to put this one in there for that reason, but it's still got a South American flavour. On December the 2nd, Ghana against Uruguay, and I love my Ghanaian football. Big revenge mission for Ghana, 12 years after the uh, Suarez handball. We'll move swiftly on from that. He's still there, of course. Uh, Do you think the sight of Possibly the world's most hated centre forward, along with Diego Costa, will inspire the great Ghana side. I mean, it's uh, it's great that it's um, that this fixture has a history. You know, I think it's it's fantastic. You know, uh, and I mean, it's just such an it's become such an iconic uh, like you know moment. Really, the, his his handball. Um, you know, I, I know I've, I've I've in the past I've been accused of defending Suarez. Because obviously, I that's wonder why. Because I, I was, I support Liverpool and all that. Obviously, that was pre-Liverpool days. Um, you know, just um, you know, <laughs> let's remember that. But also, but also, I mean, there was a lot of like, you know, the feeling that you know, he, like he cheated and like he cheated Ghana out of it and all that. And I can, I, I, I obviously clearly see where people, what people are talking about and all that. It was absolutely heartbreaking, you know. I mean, and I think so many people wanted Ghana to go through. But I mean, it, it's no different, really, than you know, like taking down someone who's through on goal, or like you know, it, it's it's a it's a professional act, shall we say, a professional foul. Ghana did get a penalty, 
Ghana, you know, uh, and Suarez did get sent off. So there was no injustice I'm there. It's not for like the he... text messages to fly in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But uh, but I've said all, all along, like it's not like it, it, you know, it was uh, sort of like a, a moral injustice. But like, uh, but you know, in, in terms of like what uh, what happened on the pitch, and you know, the referee did not miss the handball. You know, it was not missed. You know, they got their penalty. Suarez got sent off. He didn't get away with anything. You know, it's just that when Asamoa Gian like stepped up, you know, it's it's it was absolute heartbreak for them. You know, and I think you know the fact that Suarez is there just obviously adds to the to the spice, the spice. of this match. And it's great when you know it's fantastic when you have these uh, like. Uh, when you, you speak about matches that have a bit of history, I mean, we were just talking about Germany, uh, Germany, Spain, and they played each other a few times. Uh, but one of them, obviously, was the, like the semi final in 2010, and, and Spain went on to, to win the World Cup. So, like, you know, like nations and fans, you know, really remember these things. And I, I, I bet you the Ghana fans cannot wait for this. They can't know? wait. But listen, let's, I'm going to defend my pal Ali Khaled here just before before I give his email address out to all the Ghanaian fans. But listen, in, in all seriousness, what I would say is that any fan would take it. Any fan, if it, if the shoe's on the other foot, you know, for, for that, look at Diego Maradona, look at Argentina, look at Thierry Henry with France. Any fan would take it. It's just because when it doesn't work out, play out for you, you feel that unjust. So looking forward to that one. Really, really good. There are main points. There are fantastic points for discussion. And please... When you listen to this, let us know on Twitter as well. Follow us on the on the new Twitter handle, which is Going Great Guns, as well at Arab News. Listen, Ali, all I sort of wanted to do is is bring it all together, really, and and say, let the World Cup commence, as far as we are concerned. But last word must go to Qatar. It started at the top of the pod with it. It should end with it. it it's people, you know, they're keeping an eye on. Uh, on the team, of course, because it, they're the hosts. They play the first game, and I've actually got a sneaky feeling that they're going to do all right, driven on by that by that crowd, the fervent crowd who are going to be so up for it. I think they've got a chance in their first game as well. Um, and the longer the hosts last, the better for the tournament. Beat Ecuador, as I say, that could be possible. Uh, but everything that happens in a tournament from a tournament's perspective will have an impact on on the country, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think uh, uh, you've hit the nail on the head. You know, that Ecuador match is so important. You know, it's, it's the opening match of the tournament. Flying and it's you know, Yeah. And, and, you know, it's the fans are going to be really up for it and all that. And and I think, like, you know, it's a moment 12 years in the making, really. You know, they've been building up towards this. And, and also, I mean, just purely from a football point of view, Ecuador is probably their best chance of getting three points, you know, uh, from that tournament, uh, from that group. So good, good place to start for them. If they get three points, I mean, obviously, like, it, it, you know, they will really believe that picking up one more point in the other two games uh, will will see them through, you know, and which would be an incredible achievement, I think, really, to Qatar. But let's not forget they are the Asian champions. You know, they uh, they won they won the tournament uh, in 2019 against uh, sorry here in uh, in the Emirates, and they they've got like a group of players who have grown up together through the Aspire Academy, through the age group teams. Uh, they've got uh, a brilliant player. Yeah, Akram Afifi is a great player. Al Ali, you know, like these two really, really like, uh, you know, stars in the team. Um, and uh, as you say, so from a football point of view, I think it, we always say it, you know, the, the longer the, the, the hosts last in the tournament, you know, they, it, for people on the ground there and all that, there's, there's a lot more excitement, you know. Um, and obviously, like, you know, everything else that goes along with it as well, Pete, you know, the fans on the, on the ground, they want to enjoy themselves. The stadiums are fantastic. We know that, you know. Yeah. It's been like we said at the top. There's been controversies. There's been like criticisms and all that. But like, you know, we we like to focus on football on on here, you know. And we're not going to go into like too, too many other things, you know. So you know, we, the stadiums will look fantastic on TV. You know, we I've I've been lucky enough to have a, a look at some of them, and uh, and you know we you know we await to see how much you know uh, you know enjoyment the fans have there you know like the people who are, we've spoken to i know you, you've spoken to like uh you know england fans and, and welsh fans and all they're, they're really excited you know and i think uh and, and like i said like for us it's first world cup in the arab world you know there's four arab teams you know so we're really going to be like uh, you know looking to see how they do as well uh of course um uh, uh in particular saudi arabia you know we're like we, we have like big interest in that uh and uh like good squad there so all in all you know like i think 
all eyes are on Qatar, of course, you know, so we will be seeing, keep an eye on how things go, you know, as a tournament, but also how the, their football team does, you know, and they could surprise a few people. They could surprise a few people. That's it from me, Pete Redding, and him, Ali Khalid, on the Arab News World Cup podcast, the day before the deal and Skinner re-release, it's coming home. Well, it is coming home. It's coming home to the Middle East and to Doha. 